Hello, this is Professor Vanilia Randall uh, with Racial Justice Now, and we want to provide you a summary of the Dayton Public School Progress Monitoring Data Report for winter 2014-15. The actual report is a one-pager, eight and a half by 17 inches that is uh, full of numbers and data and we thought that it might be more helpful to you to have a summary if you want um, the actual data uh, which lists all the information for individual schools which we won't be going over uh, you need to contact Dayton Public School and do a public uh, information request we will tell you how to do that at the end of this um, at the, at the end of this uh, uh, video. Okay, so uh, this report was presented at a board retreat uh, on in January. Uh, it was pre presented by the uh, administrators and we, again, I want to say we summarized it. This is not the way they presented. This is the way we summarized it in order to make the data understandable for ourselves and for everyone else. Okay, so the re so uh, the report sheet starts off with student indicators and they list two of their goals. Goal number one is all students will grow at least one academic year uh, in, in, during the school year. So uh, this data is to help understand how they are progressing to meeting that goal. So we we'll start with elementary students. The data sheet is divided up into the percent of students on track, student growth percentile, and average reading lexile. We really didn't summarize the student growth percentile because we really need to understand that better we, uh, in terms of what it means. So uh, we'll have to come back to that at a later date after we've had more conversations with Dayton Public Schools about how they presented the data uh, and so that we can summarize it. To start, what we did is to do percent of students on track and the average reading lexile and we'll explain each of those as we go through it. So our understanding is, is at the beginning of the school year uh, there, during a month month period there was a kindergarten readiness assessment done. Uh, we don't actually know what was uh, what they tested in that assessment. That question was asked by a board member but it wasn't really answered. So uh, whatever is tested uh, in terms of whether or not our students are ready for kindergarten when they get to kindergarten. Only 33% of the students uh, were ready for kindergarten based on this test. That means that Dayton starts off behind uh, with 67% of the students not ready for kindergarten. Uh, they tested a total of number of thir schools. We arbitrarily picked the number of saying that we would like to see as a goal, that is racial justice now, that 70% of the students would be ready for kindergarten when they get there. And we looked at the data to see how many schools had 70% of their students ready when they entered and none of Dayton schools had that. The school with the highest percentage ready was uh, Charity Early which had 58% so they had slightly more than half of their students ready and the school with the lowest percentage was E.J. Brown which only had 9% ready. So obviously this is something for a significant conversation uh, not only about how do we help parents uh, get their students ready, but if the school if the if the school starts off with a large majority of their students not ready for kindergarten, a question I have is do they need to rethink 
how they do kindergarten then and how they structure the whole process for those students coming in. So early literacy, which is about first grade reading, one of the things to note is that this is not whether or not the students read because they're read too. It's more about, in my understanding, whether or not they have comprehension and understanding, which is a which is a very good point because there's a difference between understanding uh, your environment and being able to read. And in this category, when uh, when first graders were read to for this assessment, 75% of them was on track for understanding their environment. And I think that's a really good. Uh, a good uh, strength of our students that they 75% under, understand. So the total number of schools uh, were 19. The number of schools with greater than 70% was 12. So this was spread out over the entire district. Schools with the highest percentage was uh, uh, Charity Early, which had 91% of their first graders on track. And school with the lowest percentage was uh, Westwood, which only had 61% uh, with their first graders on track, but still over 50%. So this is a strength that we have to play on. And it also goes into maybe our students are more oral uh, learners and that we have to take that into consideration as we begin to teach them things and work with them in terms of helping Dayton Public School uh, advance. Uh, third grade uh, fall OAA uh, is, uh, you know, we have a third grade reading guarantee and the students have uh, twice that they can uh, take the test in the fall and in the spring. And so this measures the percent of students on track uh, for uh, passing the third grade reading test. Uh, <clears throat> this district average was 32%. That means 68% are not on track. No school got greater than 70%. The school with the highest percentage of third grade on track was Charity Early with 54%. And the school with the lowest percentage was Fairview with 7%. Uh, racial justice now really believes that all of this number, the kindergarten assessment, uh, the um, uh, early literacy, and the third grade reading lend strength to the idea why we should not be suspending our pre-K through third graders. It's important to keep students who are behind in school. Uh, and to deal with the discipline problems within the school. So the other thing that they presented was uh, uh, that we're going to talk about. They actually, as I said, they presented the student growth percentile, but we're not going to talk about that because we don't really understand their presentation. Uh, they presented average reading Lexile. So this is a test uh, that that there's that is geared towards judging whether a student is on track to be college and career ready by the end of the 12th grade. So at each grade level, students are tested to determine whether they're, whether they're meeting their grade level, whether they're on track. Now, it's an average, and so that means that this doesn't go for every student. It's uh, in some in some of the students are going to have um, uh, high numbers, and some of the students are going to have very low numbers. Taken together, we get an average. And what what the data showed that uh, for Dayton is that there was no school whose average reading lexile met the expected grade level. That is, not one of the schools had an average at the grade level that you would expect it. Not second grade, not third grade, not fourth grade, not fifth grade, not sixth grade. 
So this problem of reading is being passed on, in my estimation, from grade to grade. And I'm real cognizant of this because I had a, a child with a reading difficulty and they wanted to pass him on and I just refused. I said it had the reading had to be taken care of before we can pass him on to the next grade level. Um, okay, so I think that that's something, this is a major issue for uh, our students because I think as you'll see that it shows up in high school this problem of not meeting the grade level where they're at and then being passed on to the next grade level. So with high school students they have uh, high school students have tests that they have to pass to be proficient at and so the school looks at the percent of students who are at or above proficiency for at least one test. We Again, we didn't do the student growth percentile, but we did do the average reading lexile. So reading, uh, Ohio graduation test in the fall, the percent at or above proficiency, uh, only 27%, that's 73% of the students was uh, uh, did not was not at or above proficiency. Total number of schools was six. Number of schools with greater than seventy percent was zero. Schools with the highest percent at proficiency was Stivers with forty seven percent, and schools with the lowest percentage was Meadowdale with sixteen percent. So the, 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 the reading problem uh, is just being passed right on into uh, high school. Math, the same, pro same uh, kind of structure, the Ohio graduation test, the percent of students at or above proficiency, only 27%, 73% was not. Uh, at or above proficiency, no school got over uh, seventy percent. The school with the highest proficiency, highest percentage, excuse me, the school with the highest percentage uh, was Stivers with thirty-six percent uh, of their students at or above proficiency, and the school with the lowest percentage was Longfellow with seventeen percent at or below. Uh, uh, excuse me, at or above proficiency. So average reading lex uh, is, uh, excuse me, I have on this chart elementary students. So the average reading lex for high school students, again, that's a test that's based on text that represents what a student should be able to read at the specific grade level. The number of schools whose average reading lexile met the expected uh, reading lexile. At 7th grade, it was Stivers. At 8th grade, it was Stivers. 10th grade, they didn't present the information. The, it wasn't presented at all. I don't know whether that means they don't have the information or they just didn't present the information. 11th grader, uh, the information wasn't presented. And 12th grader wasn't presented. This is very important information because uh, it's not enough to graduate students. We have to graduate students who are reading at grade level. And the community needs to know at what grade level is the average 12th grade student and 11th grade student and 10th grade student in Dayton. Uh, at what grade level are they functioning? Now, Stivers... Uh, is met the grade level at 7th, 8th, and ninth grade. And I have a question because I'd like to know about, I wonder if Stivers functions sort of like a public charter school because Stivers is, uh, takes in all new students in the 7th grade and many of their students come here for the arts. I wonder if Stivers uh, has a process of admission that may cause them to uh, have uh, that the students who are they admit have a higher reading level than the other schools. 
so that it may not be that stivers are doing something so much wonderful and better it may be that stivers is just um, cherry picking among all of the schools that go to Dayton Public Schools in the seventh grade and they're getting the stronger students and consequently that strength holds up through the process. Um, I like that's one of the questions I think racial justice now can ask is what what is the admission what does the admission uh, process for Stivers and what does their students look like compared to other schools. If in fact Stivers meets a represented sample of all the students in Dayton and that their uh, students have uh, admission uh, abilities similar to other high schools then we should be looking at Stivers uh, to see what they're doing. Uh, but my my intuition says that this is an admission issue, not uh, necessarily a um, a practice issue in terms of Stivers doing something better. Uh, to, to, but none of the six schools, we only have one that's functioning at grade level, and that is Stivers. This is when uh, they the when the data report gives a number of, and we went and looked and said what is the equivalent grade level for the number that they give. So the ninth grade leading Lexile averages they give a number. So for uh, Belmont, for instance. They, the number is 625, um, and that is equivalent to a, a third grade reading level. Now, that doesn't mean all the students are reading at a third grade level. That means the average reading level for the students in Belmont is a third grade level. That means they have a lot of students who are reading below that level and, and students who are reading above that level and it averages out to that level. And, um, and so this is, this is a major concern um, if a large number of our students are reading on average uh, in high school at the third grade level uh, or below. Uh, David Points was sixth grade, Dunbar was third grade, Longfellow was not applicable. Uh, they didn't present uh, that information. Uh, Meadowdale was third grade. Again, Stivers was the only one that had a ninth grade reading level, and Thurgood Marsh, Thurgood was second grade. I want to make it clear this is not saying that the students reading as far as I understand this is saying when they took this test which was designed to determine whether they were at where they should be at in order to read to be ready for college and career by the end of the 12th grade the reading level was uh, equivalent for these schools to uh, was the, all of the school for Stivers was not at the ninth grade reading level, so that means all of the schools but Stivers, uh, the students are not on track to be college and career ready at the end of the twelfth grade, and that the number they assign would place them at an equivalent grade level, and I think that is helpful to understanding how far behind our city, our Dayton uh, schools are. So that's, uh, so I, I think the goal too was to improve the district's learning environment. And under that, they've presented out of school suspensions information. And we are really thankful that they are presenting this suspension information. Uh, the ad, and this is suspension information is as of December the 18th, 2014. And so for elementary, the rate per hundred, that's 6.2 suspensions for every hundred students.
students. Okay, let me say that again. 6.2 suspensions for every 100 students. Now, that's not a percent of students that get suspended. That's the number of suspensions per 100 students. Five uh, schools had over 10 suspensions per 100 students. School with the highest rate was World of Wonder with 19.2 suspensions per 100 students. And school with the lowest average, uh, excuse me, rate. Schools with the lowest rate, the school with the lowest rate was Cleveland with 0.4 suspensions per 100 students. Uh, there was no information to, to available on racial disparity and no information on disability disparity, so we are unable to judge the progress on eliminating racial disparity and eliminating disability disparity. For high schools, uh, again, the this is the numbers were presented as of December the 18th, uh, 2014. In high schools, the rate per hundred is 14.6 suspensions per 100 students with four student, four schools having over 10 suspensions per 100 students. The school with the highest uh, rate was Thurgood with 24.6 per uh, students, uh, 24.6 suspensions per 100 students, and the school with the lowest uh, rate uh, was Cleveland with 2.2 suspensions per 100 students. Again, no information was provided on uh, racial disparity or disability disparity, so there's no way to make a judgment on how the school is progressing on that. Uh, we think that, th th in general, the school has um, Dayton Public School has has been working on a suspension. It has uh, a restorative justice program, and it's really been working on reducing the suspensions. and And we applaud them for that. Uh, one of our concerns is we have heard uh, rumors that uh, some of the schools are 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 reducing the suspension by sending kids, kids, kids home without calling it a suspension. And we would be concerned if that is true, so we're going to follow up on that. Now, if you would like the report itself, uh, so that you can see it for yourself, the document this summary is based on is the District Transformation Leadership Team winner 2014-15 Progress Monitoring Data Dayton Public School. The request can be su you can submit a public records request online, and uh, you just have to go to Dayton Public Schools uh, and uh, you know use this link, copy this link, and use this link, and you can submit the request online. Uh, I don't know whether some institutions charges for public requests. I don't know whether Dayton does or doesn't, doesn't, does or does not. I would hope that Dayton would start putting all of this information up on the internet so that it's available. That the same information they give the board, they give to the community. Um, finally, uh, we want to end this with a call for help. Um, we learned belatedly that most of the business of the Dayton Public School is not conducted at the business meeting. It's it's conducted at uh, uh, Dayton uh, retreat, strategic planning um, meetings, and committee meetings. Uh, Dayton Public School has over 40 scheduled meetings uh, where they're going to conduct board business. We believe that we elect the board and so that's who we have to hold accountable. 
the the superintendent is accountable to the board the board is accountable to the community but in order to hold the board accountable we have to know what is going on and to know what's going on we have to attend every single meeting um, get the information formulate questions and take them back to the board so we need people to help join us on a Dayton public school watch team all since most of these meetings you will not be able to talk you'll need to be able to sit for two two and a half three four hours with doing nothing but listening and taking notes and formulating potential questions that you think we should ask the board uh, if you can attend two or three meetings during the year please contact us uh, it, there, our email info at racialjusticenow.org. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions about our summary or questions you'd like for us to put to the board, actually, if you have questions that you would like to put to the board, we strongly encourage you to go to the board and put your questions um, to the board. Their business meeting is on the I believe it's the third Tuesday uh, of every month uh, where you can speak the actual meeting where the public can speak and um, please go to that and ask your questions uh, thank you and we look forward to working with you um, in uh, on this